Hey siblings, welcome to the first of our Advent Wednesday wanderings. It's quite simple what we're going to do together today. I'm going to light the candle, share with you a few thoughts on the themes that we've been looking at in our devotional material. Then I'll leave space for a wee bit of silence and I'll end with a song for us. We're just going to take a moment to light our candle. And this week, the first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope. One of my favourite definitions of hope is the refusal to accept the situation as it is. Hope, the refusal to accept the situation as it is. And as I light this candle, we're reminded that in Jesus, we see God refusing to accept the situation of humanity as it was and gifting us a redeemer to sustain us for the days ahead. So as we keep our eyes fixed on the light of this candle, may we reflect on hope in a moment of silence. Friends, this week in our reading of our devotional material, we get to the point in the story where the genealogy of Jesus is shared. Now, I know that some of you will struggle with this because the reality is those names are hard to pronounce. And so you might be tempted to skip ahead. But there is a long list of names that link the past to Jesus. And some names within that list are surprising particularly the names of some of the women. Now think about the culture and the context of the time. It was the father's line that usually represented a genealogy. And so I have this wonderful little vision of Mary and Joseph holding baby Jesus, rocking him to sleep, reciting this genealogy over him in the way in which we talk about to those around us and our family members now about the family members that have passed. Our past leaves a legacy and impacts our future. Many of you will know that I've spoken about this before that when people look at my daughter Georgia they often refer to her as a mini me. She looks like me. Obviously not so much now because I am a little bit older than her but there are many pictures of her as a baby that look like pictures of me as a baby. And to the untrained eye, if you were to see two pictures, you might be fooled into thinking that they were the same baby, even though they're a fair few years apart. Our past impacts our future. And so these names are important. They form part of the story of Jesus moving forward and all of our families have stories that impact us all of our families have stories of struggle and we see that particularly in the women uh, whose names are shared we don't see an easy ride they're not queens living in comfort without any wants or worries and i guess that's what gives me hope when i read this story when I read the names and I reflect on who the people were, it gives me a place in the story too. Because they were normal, regular humans. Humans who had struggles, humans who had joys, humans who had experienced a whole breadth of life in their lifetime. Georgia didn't get to meet many of her grandparents, but she does sit with the stories. And she was really young when my dad died, but she sits with the stories. She remembers, as if she were there, the countless Boxing Day parties where the men in our family would all get dressed up and do a show. 
and the kids in our families, well, we were trained dancers, so we always did a show at any event. And although Georgia wasn't there, she remembers the stories. The legacy lives with her. I wonder what you've been watching on TV recently. I had to write a fair few Christmas cards, as some of you may know. So while I was writing my Christmas cards, I got into watching Who Do You Think You Are? It's about celebrities and the way in which they trace back their ancestors, finding out something of the past and trying to think about how it reflects on their current and their future. I was really encouraged to watch the one of Pixie Lott. Pixie trying to work out where her musical skills and talents come from and actually found them a few grandfathers ago. It gives us much to think about, doesn't it? how our family history stories shape our present and our future. As we look at the candle and we think about hope, I wonder what stories in your family have brought you hope? Often hope comes out of a difficult situation. As I said, the refusal to accept the situation as it is. And that's definitely been the case for me. In our family, we have this odd few weeks of time a few years ago, which we often refer to as eight weeks of hell. My job was under threat of redundancy. My dad got sick in Spain and I had to go. My dad died. And as part of my redundancy package, I was redeployed. It's an interesting term, isn't it? I was gifted another job with the same organisation, but 180 miles away from my friends and family. And I had to move. In eight weeks, all these events unfolded and they were a tough, hard eight weeks. But now, 10 years on, I look at them with a different lens. If I hadn't have made that move, if I hadn't have gone to Cornwall, then I wouldn't have met two beautiful, amazing people, Chris and Liesl Baldwin. Chris and Liesl Baldwin were my, my bosses. They were the ministers at the church that I was the youth worker at in Cornwall. And I don't think I would be a minister if it wasn't for them. For the way in which they ministered, for the way in which they loved me, and the way in which they taught Jesus to all people at different levels that people could understand in real and practical ways as well as in sermons and song. They continue to be inspirations in my life as people who have signposted me to call me deeper into who Jesus is, into who I am because of Jesus. So I wonder what stories you have, stories maybe of struggle and despair, but maybe struggles that have led to hope. Perhaps you can give some time to thinking about that this week as you light your candle and reflect. And I wonder who and what stories have pulled you closer to Jesus than you were before. Let's take a moment to be still. Loving God, I thank you that you know our pasts and the generations that have gone before. You know the ways in which those experiences have shaped and moulded us into who we are. But Lord, I am so thankful that we are not the finished products yet, that you call us to lean deeper into Jesus so that we may be transformed and grow in his likeness. As we think about hope and we reflect on Jesus, may we bring hope to those around us in the way Jesus brought hope to those around him. Remembering all those that he encountered outside of the walls of the church of the time. Encountering those who felt rejected, who were outcasts, who felt like there was no place for them to belong. 
may we, as your people, your representatives here in Thursdown, in Mitcham Lane Baptist Church in London, reflect that hopeful welcoming to all those we encounter. On the days when it's good and we are full of joy, but also too on the days of struggle and despair. Help us to remember your story, Lord, that we might find our place within it and that we might have hope, knowing that you refused to accept the situation as it was and gifted us your one and only son. We thank you for that, God. Amen. Well, friends, I hope that you enjoy the song that I've chosen to reflect on today and join me next week when we share in part two of our Wednesday Advent wanderings. Take care. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord our Lord When darkness seems To hide His face I rest on Him unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil Christ Stand before the throne